School Bus Scrubbing, AI Apprehension, and Sunny Ceramics. All this and more as the Stafford Weekly News starts now. Welcome to the Friday, July 14th edition of the Stafford Weekly News. I'm Randall Williams. If you're one of those folks who can't face the day without a visit to Starbucks, you might also want to know about the coffee providers teaming with SMSD to ensure a clean start for incoming students. This is a great opportunity today for Stafford MSD, uh, the great little school uh, district in Texas. Starbucks has honored us with the opportunity to bring over volunteers, and it's a great honor. It's a pleasure to have them come over, especially in the summer when we're utilizing cleaning all of our buses, cleaning our outside areas. So what they're gonna help us do today is basically clean our buses inside, uh, make sure that they're nice and ready for when the students return, and they're gonna help us power wash our athletic area. We have a uh, outside stadium that seats over uh, 2,500 guests, and so they're gonna start on those. We have a fleet of over 30 buses that they're gonna help us with to clean inside, and uh, that is also including our special needs bus. It's a great honor. This is the first time that we've had this happen. Ms. Roberts put this together for us. Dr. Bostic is so pleased uh, with them coming over and helping us, and of course, they brought the wonderful treats from uh, Starbucks, which we all love. And it's just an honor uh, for them to come out and assist us. We get caught up sometimes with, uh, we're doing this in this direction for cleaning. We're prepping for summer school. Uh, we're also getting ready for the new upcoming year. And the extra help is really, uh, it, it's gonna assist us and we don't have to uh, think that, okay, we can't get this done. They're helping us with things that normally we'd be rushing to do. So it's an honor. I can't reiterate that enough for Starbucks to offer and for Ms. Roberts to put this together for us. So, uh, I'm the uh, store manager of the Starbucks on Murphy and in Independence. And um, I'm just so honored to be here today and give the opportunity for my partners and I to help out the community, uh, especially in a way that impacts the students. It's, it's uh, very important to be able to have a clean and safe environment. So the fact that we're able to impact that, just, it's, it, it fills my heart. Ms. Cherise is one of my customers. And so specifically, Starbucks has a um, program called the Week of Kindness. And this is a week where we want to highlight local, um, local businesses and local nonprofits to be able to help them in a way that helps the community. Uh, and it just, it just happened at the right moment where I was looking at that paper, she walked in and I said, like, this, this was meant to be. The, the, the thing that comes to mind immediately is that given this opportunity, we just opened up a, a gateway for more opportunities. Even if it's on a smaller scale, uh, this creates that movement and that partnership, that relationship that makes it easy for um, us to reach out and for the impact to be greater along the years. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm it may seem these days that there's always somebody shouting about AI, artificial intelligence. The Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce recently held a panel discussion about the technology and whether you should be concerned. This is a part of a multi-part series we're doing on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, as we all know, has, has really hit the media and has taken a, a quick move forward and so forth. So we're trying to bring the highlight of artificial intelligence in various aspects to our community and our business organizations. And so today's session is going to be about the pros and cons of artificial intelligence. There certainly is hesitation, I think, in the public in general about how fast it's moving. There's so many opportunities with it. So we have a wonderful group of panelists today. They're going to give us the different perspectives and allow the audience also to ask some questions. These are volunteers in the community, as we all are, to serve on the board and otherwise. And so with this, we have a wide range. We have panelists from the education, from Houston Community College, from the University of Houston. 
We have another gentleman that serves on our committee for the Fort Bend Future Initiative that brings it into perspective of how does AI really apply to small businesses? And a lot of our membership are small businesses and larger, but you really have to look at your audience and make sure that you're looking at the aspects of AI and have that opportunity to translate that into what does it mean for me as a business owner? How can I leverage this? And also, as I mentioned, the opportunity to talk a little bit about there's a natural hesitancy. Anytime there's new technology, there's excitement, but there's hesitancy. What's this going to do? And so I think we all have seen in the media and all the focus how this has moved so quickly, how there are so many questions out there as this evolves. I hope to talk about practical use cases. When ChatGPT got a lot of notoriety over the last few months, and now they want to know what are the implications of AI. A lot of people are concerned about AI taking their jobs, biases. There are a lot of concerns about AI. So I want to talk about things to kind of calm those fears about AI, talk about practically what it is, what it is not, and how to use it. Because AI, at its best, is just a companion for us. It's something that humans can use to make their productivity, increase their productivity, and make their daily lives easier. For the past 15 years, approximately, enormous uh, advances um, have been made in artificial intelligence. Large language models in particular, um, just in the last few months, uh, ChatGPT has become famous. What is needed is a, a huge number of people be filling hundreds of thousands of jobs in this country, applying that AI that's been developed to solution business problems. What we really hope is they continue to gain the education and gain perspective. As we've all seen, there's so many questions, you know, the pros, the cons, what's going on, hesitancy we've talked about. So what we hope in this session with our panelists is we're able to leverage their expertise and their perspectives, share that with the audience, but as we mentioned earlier also, make sure that's interactive so that they go away with an understanding, but they've also gone away not with an experience where they just received information, they can share information. This is not anything new. It actually started in the 50s, this technology, and people have been using it for years. You use it on a daily basis. If you're using navigation, you're using voice assistance, you're using language translation. You've been using it for years, you just really didn't know about it. So now, to really understand that we've been using it, now, now how can I become educated, and how can I take advantage of it? Don't be afraid of artificial intelligence. Uh, we are, um, there's a great deal of effort in making it uh, as compatible as possible with human beings. That is with the goal in mind of making artificial intelligence uh, a part in the development of human intelligence, really serving as a, as a partner to human beings rather than us being a master and they're the slave or vice versa. Educational Intricacies, next. In Stafford, diversity is not just a number, it's who we are. When you are here, you become part of the story. You can sleep well knowing we're always on the job and looking out for you. It's a great place for growth and opportunity. Tradition starts here. We teach your children and we stick around for your grandchildren. We are one. We are Stafford. This is the city of Stafford, and we are one. So you've got your high school diploma. Now what? Jim Moran found himself at an event to guide graduates to their next educational destination. <laughs> Today we're here for our Midsummer Enrollment Fair here at Houston Community College on our Stafford campus. This fair is designed to help high school students that will be enrolling in HCC this fall semester, uh, getting them through the pipeline, admissions, advising, financial aid, and hopefully leaving with the class schedule today. My team, the admissions advisors, we go into the high schools weekly and recruit students. However, we know some students make last minute decisions and we want to get those students a chance to enroll that have not enrolled yet at Houston Community College, give them a chance to come in person and more like a one-stop shop where they can see an advisor, select their program plan, maybe take the TSI test, uh, talk about some type of class schedules and hopefully leave with the class schedule today. 
We also have admissions reps on hand in case they need to submit meningitis or transcripts or things of that nature. So it's just a one-stop shop so the student helping transition the high school student from high school into college. Our enrollment is up here at Southwest, uh, which is a great thing. Uh, our implementation into the high schools being admissions advisors helps break down some of those barriers that stop students from enrolling into college and particularly into HCC. We have over 200 programs that the students need to know about and once we explain those different options, whether it be construction management, welding, education, nursing, etc., we want to let those students know the options that they can achieve here at HCC at such a lower cost than some of our counterparts. So when our department was implemented, enrollment has gone up tremendously, which is a great thing for not only Houston Community College, but for the community that we serve to give these students a chance after high school. We had an event similar to this at our uh, West Loop campus for our HISD students. So here at Southwest, we get a great opportunity to serve HISD students as well as Fort Bend students. So we have a team at West Loop, we have a team at Stafford. Pretty much all of our team has an entire database of students that we get a chance to serve. So it's great to see some familiar faces that we've been working with all school year that are actually coming here and enrolling. A lot of these students may be first time uh, generational college students. So for them to leave today with a college schedule and begin college this coming fall is a big deal to their families and we're just glad to play a small part in that for that student's future. Stringing you along next. You can try, but you won't find another city like Stafford, Texas. Serving our community just like you like it. Taking care of you and your home since 1945. We believe in STEM to learn and STEM to earn. We're heading into college certified and career ready. As a former student of Stafford, I take pride in keeping our classrooms safe. We are Stafford, we are one. The use of pottery at home and work has a long and ancient history. They're just so useful. But a current exhibition at the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft makes the argument for pottery as a medium for self-expression and storytelling. This exhibition is called uh, Gabo Martinez, The Land of Flowers. The name is an English translation of a Nahuatl term, uh, Xochitlalpan, which literally means the land of flowers. Uh, it's a reference to an Aztec or a Mexica as they knew themselves, a mystical realm where the ancestors were dwelling and could be called into existence among the land of the living. So it's an exhibition that really focuses on the flower as a unique uh, historic motif in Mexican culture, as well as spiritual elements that Gabo Martinez, the Texas-based artist uh, whose solo show this is, focuses on in the body of work she's presenting here. Gabo is combining her interest in research in pre-colonial motifs like the flower, um, and also her own personal motifs that she develops through meditative drawing and just series of works that she builds up over time that you can see in her ceramics and her printmaking. Um, in particular, the piece in the center of the gallery propped up in the center of the cinder blocks uh, of the crying eyes is a motif that she developed because um, she wanted to kind of celebrate the virtues of being a bit of a crybaby, or in Spanish, chillona. Gabo does lino cut uh, printing, partially because the linoleum uh, that's used to make these prints is very forgiving as far as cutting goes. And to her, actually, as an artist who works primarily in terracotta or barro rojo, which is a very pliant clay, it mimics some of the abilities that she has to do some of her mark making in a similar way on the lino cuts. So for these, she uses hand cut blocks that she puts on mulberry paper, which is why you can see this very fine, almost iridescent paper waving behind me has that very luminescent quality. And she presses the paper into the ink blocks with a tool called a baron to achieve these very, um, the effect I would say is vibrational on the eye with the vivid yellow and the denseness of the patterns on the paper. I think thematically, the piece that I think people 
should take a close look at. Um, all of them really deserve a close look as in addition to the flower and the eye motif, Gabo harnesses uh, motifs like the skin of corn or piel de maiz to decorate her checkered vessels. And so she's sort of converting a lot of historic motifs, as I said, into her personal visual language. Um, but she actually is really well known for her poem or inscribed vessels as well, of which there is only one in this show. Uh, the one is called Poem Vessel, and it's by the title wall of the exhibition. Um, and on it, she's inscribed a very self-determinating poem about what it means to her to actually call into existence a realm like Xochitlalpan, the land of flowers, and it's by her will and her artistic um, efforts alone that she can actually create the conditions for her to thrive. And it's an important connection to her community work as the founder of the Tepeyac Collective, which is based in San Marcos, which is a group that's really focused on bringing um, attention and needed resources to BIPOC artists in the ceramic field. Um, and giving them the opportunity to thrive as well. So I would say um, to people, take some time to read that. Um, it's a poem that goes all the way around the vessel and it's a really powerful statement of Gabo's about why she's making the art and her intentions both physically and spiritually when she engages in her craft process. Another everyday item with a long and useful history is rope. Fernando Ramirez visited the George Ranch Historical Park's hands-on history classes to tie up this story. What we're doing today is we are making string and you could use, you could do this with practically any, any material. Uh, but for our guests who are coming out, we are taking pieces of raffia, which actually you can buy at the hobby store, and twisting this into an actual piece of string, which is very, very functional, very, very, very strong. So the using the hands is we're taking two individual strands and we're hand twisting them into this little piece of string right here. We also have a rope making machine, and that is for making multiple strand uh, rope, it, but it's the same concept, but you have a hand crank which enables you to make the rope a whole lot quicker and way more efficient. People have been needing uh, things like string for tying all different kinds of things together, and there's all kinds of natural materials available, um, and it actually works out pretty well. There's been at least twice where I've actually needed a piece of string rope and, but I didn't have any plant fibers, so I actually took trash bags, cut them into long strips, and made it into a piece of string just like this, used it for tying down. So it's not just historical, it's, it's quite practical and useful. The feedback on the hands-on history has just been absolutely, absolutely incredible. We did uh, felting, where you're taking pieces of wool and you're literally poking it with a very specialized needle to compact the fibers and to make it into a little piece of felt. And some of these kids have been making hearts. Uh, somebody made an evil looking bunny. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, it it's, you know, it's requires a little bit of patience and repetitive uh, motion so you can literally folks have been zoning out and just hyper focusing on some of these crafts and just then all of a sudden they kind of like check in and it's like they made this amazing piece of felt or just about anything else we've been doing out here. The success of our hands-on history program wouldn't be possible if it weren't for all these teenagers who volunteered their summer vacation to come out here and help us out. Uh, they're amazing. They learn not only to do the hands-on history program, but they're learning to tell the stories, to learning how to effectively communicate and what we do out here. So our guests who come out here to the George Ranch Historical Park, one, I want, biggest thing, I want you to have fun and to be able to learn a little bit of history, not by just looking at it through, you know, last thing, looking at it through a display case. Come here, look at it, pick it up, see it, see how it works, see what it's used for, and actually doing it. That's that's really right, bringing history to life. That's the goal of the George Ranch. This summer, this whole summer experience has been just an incredible, incredible amount of fun. It's making the summer pass by actually way too quickly. I'm having a great time. I'm hoping all the guests have a great time.
That's a wrap on our news for this week. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at Stafford Weekly News, I'm Randall Williams. May all your news be good news. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.